Hey guys, it's Landon from RH and On Point Workshops. And in this video, I'm going to hopefully teach you a little bit about how Trimble Business Center TBC manages uh, points. And uh, specifically, we're going to look at how TBC can associate multiple coordinates with one point identifier or point number. And uh, we'll look at a point derivation report. And then we'll talk about when it's appropriate to merge points. And the reason I wanted to do this video, I'm doing this video from one of my survey techs, Matthew. He asked, he asked me a little bit about merging points and when it's appropriate to merge points. So I wanted to do a video for him that, that explained that. Uh, so in order to understand when it's appropriate to merge points, you gotta, you gotta know some of those other things I just mentioned. So one of the things that makes TBC really different from uh, software like AutoCAD Civil 3D or Carlson survey or microsurvey is uh, TBC can associate multiple coordinates with a single point. Um, and I don't know of any other software that does that, although that's a genius idea, I think, in uh, maybe maybe something like, like a geomatics office or, or uh, Topcon tools will do that. So let me just show you what that looks like. So you can see I've got my points here and then uh, these are just our point numbers. And then you can see if I, if I expand each point, it gives me a list of data in the project that is related to that point. So these are coordinates and these are all vectors that are related to point one. So you can see on point one, I actually have multiple coordinates. So if you click through these, you can see there are different coordinates for each of these uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, five coordinates for point number one. Now, let's talk about each of these. So this is this is an office entered grid. That means somebody entered this coordinate, and that's usually done when you when you want to have a control quality coordinate. And you can see here in the properties dialog, it tells you these are set to control quality. Okay, when you see something like this, this global coordinate value, that's coming in with a Rhinex file or or another GPS uh, raw file. And it's a it's a lat long. It's not control quality. Now you can see the office entered. It says grid because it's set up with north and easting. This says global because it's set up as a lat long height. This is north and easting elevation. This is lat long height. Okay, here's another one from a different file. Okay, so I have three files that were imported that created a, a global lat long. This is like an autonomous position for point one. Now, what I can do, once you've processed your baselines, you don't need these, I can actually delete them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. It's gonna say, hey, do you wanna keep your adjustment? Yes, because I have a network adjustment. So now I only have two coordinates here. I have the office entered coordinate and I have the adjusted coordinate. Okay, so I have, I have both of those. Um, I can't remember if there's a way, yeah, I don't see an, an easy way. Now, if you, if you click on point one, um, it will show you both. So it shows you your grid coordinate here. This is northern easting. It shows you your local coordinate. Okay, so local is your is on your horizontal datum. So this is NAT 83, epic date 2011. And then here I've got uh, the global coordinate. Okay, so very, very similar. Okay, but you could you could have WGS 84, you could have a different uh, a different horizontal datum. So you can, if you go to your actual point, it will show you your grid and your lat long uh, ellipsoid height in the same in the same panel here. Now you'll notice if you click on these two that if you actually were to convert these to uh, northern easting, they're the same point because in my network adjustment I held point one. Okay, but for these other points they would be slightly different. Okay, because I believe I only held point one in my adjustment. Okay, so you can see the same thing here for two. We've got an office entered and an adjust adjusted. So anytime you do uh, a network adjustment, it's going to create these adjusted values for all the points in your project. Same thing for three, same thing for four, same thing for five, same thing for six. Okay, now you'll notice something else. Some of these points are red. Some of these numbers are red and some are black. If they're red, that means they've got a flag. Okay, and, and they're above the error tolerance, so that's why they're red. Okay, so I'm just looking through here to see if I can find any more. Okay, so here's another one, 300, that's got this global coordinate, right, that we're going to delete. Now, I will show you 
once you've entered a grid coordinate, you can't then, so if you want, you can, if you click a point in the properties dialog, you can actually add a coordinate for a point. Okay, but we'll, it will only let you add one grid coordinate. So once you've added a grid, you can only add a local and a global. Once you've added a local, it won't let you add another local. Okay, now you can get more than one grid if you're importing files, but it will only let you come in and manually create with this button one coordinate of each type. Uh, office, local, and global. I don't know why the software is set up that way, but it is it is set up that way. Okay, so let's look at a point derivation report. Uh, hopefully you understand at this point that you can associate more than one coordinate with a point ID in TBC, and they can be different types of coordinates. They can be a grid coordinate, northern easting elevation. They can be a, what, what they call local latitude, longitude, ellipsoid height. That's on your your horizontal datum, and then you can have what's called a global latitude, longitude, ellipsoid height, okay? And usually, don't quote me on this, but usually you're, you're gonna see your your global lat long uh, is based on WGS84, and your local lat long ellipsoid height is gonna be based on your horizontal datum like NAT83-2011. Okay. So let's look at a point derivation report. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up for seven. So if you right click on your point, you can go to point derivation report and it's gonna pull this up. It's gonna pull up in the web browser. That's the way TBC does it. And what this report does is it tells you how each possible coordinate for, for a single point can be calculated and what the differences are. Now these there's only two coordinates shown up in the in the point properties. So it's this adjusted and this office entered if you look at seven. Okay, if you drop that down, these are the only two coordinates. But for each vector in your point derivation report, it will show you if it calculated an independent coordinate for those vectors, how far they would be from the, the um, I guess what I would call the primary coordinate. Now, the primary coordinate is, is either going to be set the coordinate that you have set to control quality, it will be your network adjusted value, or it'll be the first value TBC sees. But it's gonna pick it's gonna pick one coordinate value to be your primary. Now, how do you tell what value is the primary? Because it's in the top row and these residuals are gonna be zero across the board. Now you can see what it's telling me here is that if it used the vector from one to seven, to the GPS vector from one to seven to calculate the coordinate, it's gonna be one hundredth from the northing, 100th from the easting, and 100th from uh, 100th in distance, different than if it holds the adjusted coordinate. Okay, the, the elevation difference is minus 700s. Okay, same thing here. If it if it were to hold instead the GPS at vector from five to seven, we're, we're going to have 200s difference in the northing, 100th different in the easting, 200s in the horizontal distance, and uh, a tenth in the elevation. So what you can do is you can look at this point derivation report and you can look for outliers, right? So for example, on this vector here from P300 to seven, yeah, I've got 1400s there. That, that's, you know, pushing the envelope of what I would like to see on a, on a static network, right? So I may, I may need to go in and look at that vector or I may need to delete it. Now, in this case, I had a good network adjustment. Um, I, I'm not worried about it, but sometimes you'll come in here and you'll, this is where you typically see a uh, rod height or instrument height bust. You'll have a half a foot or a foot in here. Um, and, and so you'll be able to see that. Now this will also tell you that I held this point in my adjustment because the office centered grid is zeroed to the adjusted, uh, to the adjusted value. Okay. So let's look at another one. By the way, it gives you the actual coordinate values up, up at the top here. So let's look at another report. Uh, let me pick a different point. Let's um, let's pick one with a flag on it. Let's pick 311. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so here's my adjusted coordinate right here at the top. That's the, the primary value. Okay, then it's got a GPS vector from, from point number one. That's pretty close to the adjusted value. Uh, we've got a GPS vector from 309. Again, very close to the adjusted value. We got a GPS vector from 312, again, very close to the adjusted value. Now, my office, I've got an office entered grid here, which is actually uh, 2500 out in the vertical. So why is that? Well, I happen to know that this, this was done 
to enter a leveled elevation on the point. So we ran a couple long level runs through here. And uh, this, this is the difference basically between the static GPS elevation and the leveled elevation. So that's why we have this office centered grid here. And that's why the elevation is so different. You can see right here that this tells you I held this as, as control quality, this elevation. That's what this triangle means. This ellipsoid means it's adjusted. Okay, and then I've got some values that are way out to lunch here, six feet, three feet, seven feet, eight feet. Okay, that's because this is the autonomous position that came in with the Rhinex file. And what I really wanna do is I wanna delete that. We don't need it. So if I delete it, keep the adjustment, I'm gonna recompute, and then we're gonna pull that point derivation report back up. You'll see that that, that value is now gone. Okay. So the point derivation report is a, is a useful tool to help you understand how the different coordinate values for, for a point are being calculated. Okay, so let me just close with when do you, when do you merge points? So when you import data into TBC, it's going to look at all your points. And if it sees another point in the project with the same point number, so let's say it sees another 311, it's going to look at that. And it's going to say, it's going to prompt you with a dialogue and it's going to say, hey, you've already got a 311 in this project. Do you want to merge these points and just assign the new coordinate from the data that's being imported to the, the 311 that you already have in the project? Or do you want to create a duplicate point, what TBC calls a duplicate point, and have a separate 311? And it'll do either one. So you can either assign those new coordinates coming in based off the, the vector data in the new file. You can assign those to the existing point. Remember, TBC will associate more than one coordinate with a point, single point, or it will create what's called a duplicate point. So you can have two 311s. That's another difference between something like Trimble Business Center and a Carlson survey or an AutoCAD Civil 3D where you're not allowed to have duplicate point numbers, right? So that's, that's a key difference. So what do we do at my shop? As a general rule, if you are a survey tech, I do not want you to merge points because I want to take a look at that. What do we have going on there right now? Sometimes you do want to merge points. So if you have control points in control quality points in your TBC project and you're importing a data collector file and it sees coordinates in the data collector file that are slightly different as a general rule, you're going to want to merge. OK, but we shouldn't see that happen typically at my shop. So if you're a survey tech at my shop and you get a merge dialogue, Either come and get me or another principal or don't merge the points, create the duplicate points and then let us know and we'll come, we'll come and deal with it. Now, after duplicate points are created, you can merge them later. It's, it's not that big of a deal. You just rename the point to the same point number and it'll prompt you to merge. You can merge after the fact. Okay. So hopefully this video helps Matthew understand a little bit about how points and coordinates are related to each other in Trimble Business Center how the point derivation report works, and when you might want to or not want to merge points in Trimble Business Center. Thanks for watching.